the worst of Obie and Anthony. Uh, Joe Namath. Joe. Hey, fellas. How are you, sir? Joe Namath. doing well. It's good to hear you guys. Very good. Good to hear you, Joe. Wow, look at that voice. You got that voice, Joe. He's got that voice. You know it's Joe Namath. Yep. Oh, me. Yeah. You got a book out? I do. I do. I uh, did a book with a rugged land publisher called Namath, and uh, I was influenced certainly by the couple of books that they had already done with Brett Favre and Walter Payton. I just liked the uh, the quality of the books, and then uh, Rugged Land seemed like a good team to work with, and right now they are, and we're having a, a good run. The, the book's finished, and we're very proud of it. It kind of feels like a uh, it's got like a textbook feel to it. Where it's, it's all got pretty cool paper. It's not like that dry, awful paper. I like the feel of a lot of photos. Yes, yes, and by you know uh, Harry Benson and Neil Leifer and Bart Silverman are some top notch photographers yeah and now how about uh the girls are there any and then you talk about the girls in here because that's you know the legendary joe namath we would love to know about the girls well i've uh talked about most uh most things that were pertinent uh that i could share with uh the reader uh this is basically a book to be shared with the family and the dvd that's added to it by nfl films is a very fine dvd uh, I've never, you know, I've worked on four books now. I had help with Dick Schaap and uh, Bob Oates Jr. on three of them. Uh, this one was different, certainly, and uh, it was more difficult and took longer to get done. But uh, I enjoyed the process. Now, uh, uh, Joe, more. i got to ask you, um, in this book, does it include probably the pinnacle of your career, uh, playing catch with young Bobby Brady on the Brady Bunch. <laughs> Bobby tried to fool me that time. I remember that. You know, you didn't have to be such a nice guy and go over their house. For yeah, God's right? sake, the guy's lying that he knows you. Yeah, we caught him, though, see? We taught yeah. him a lesson. Said he was sick. And then Joe, being nice, goes over and uh, sees this sick boy. Yeah. And it turns out that his father was sick. Yeah. And <laughs> You didn't walk into your trailer and have to throw Mr. Brady out, did you? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure uh, I'm sure Mr. Brady really took a liking to you. <laughs> Pretty amazing. The, the, the Brady Bunch had such a following to this day. Like of you, course, you know, people will say, "Hey, I remember the Brady Bunch you did." And that's yeah, it, it's the kick. Go out for a pet. You should have drilled one right into his head. <laughs> hey, you know they put him in a harness and raised him about thirty feet over the stage, and then crossed the stage with him up there thirty feet. He crossed. I I wouldn't have gotten up there. No, uh, he went above and beyond the call of duty. I thought very very memorable episode. You're uh, in uh, right up there with Davy Jones. <laughs> hey, are you disgusted at all with like a lot of the players today? Like, uh, are they? Uh, maybe it's just perception. The media covers different. Are they like really as arrogant and awful as they seem? Like, they seem a little bit different back, like you know, thirty years ago. Well, it certainly was different. But guys, you know, things have been changing for a good while now. We're not seeing anything new that hasn't existed since the '80s. You know, the NFL is. Uh, done a pretty good job in uh, policing the players' behavior out there and trying to keep it focused yeah. on the game. But uh, I, you have uh, show business more in the game today than yeah. ever before. I personally don't like that they're policing all that. I love all the showboating. It yeah, makes it yeah, so the, so exciting, all the crap they're, they're doing in the, uh, the end zone and stuff. Right, but some of it is uh, certainly out of place, uh, any kind of taunting deals and premeditated stuff. Uh, you know, we are a team out on the field, uh, but when the individual stuff starts taking center stage, uh, I know it's good for home entertainment, but for teamwork and the, the rest of the group, uh, they don't really care for that. Yeah, but they take care of their own. I mean, if oh, you're showboating sure. too much, you, you know, you're going to pay down the road. Of course, of course. Uh, but uh, this has been going on. I remember when Billy White Shoes Johnson started doing the dancing, man, and that was all right. There were a lot of guys, you know, doing some things in nice ways. But then it got ugly. It got mean. It got yeah, it kind of mm -hmm. got, uh, you know, out of line, and then it's really uh, reach. It, guys start reaching. You know, whenever they're planning and plotting what they're going to do for a game rather than play, you know they're not quite focused. Yeah, when you're doing a five-step dance routine in the end zone, it really <laughs> is kind of uncomfortable to watch. <laughs> or pull out a cell phone, you know. <laughs> oh, didn't he? He grabbed the cell phone behind the yeah. – yeah. that really is remember, pompous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, Joe, props. Joe, I got a, uh, a memory of you. I used to be a caddy at the Huntington Crescent Club, and I was maybe 14 or 15 at the time, and you came to play a round of golf. This goes back a few years. 
and uh, you were out there, and every single female member followed you around that day. You didn't even know they were, uh, they were following you around because they were hiding in the bushes oh, and behind knew. trees and stuff. Joe was hiding in the bushes later that <laughs> evening. <laughs> it was, it, But it was unbelievable how many women were following you around just as you played one round of golf at the Huntington Crescent Club back in the day. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> I was just a, I was a nobody. Joe was, bro it was Broadway Joe, man. You were, you were uh, quite the showman. Back yeah. then, you know? But when you mention Caddy and you bring back some memories, too, because I did that for about six years and loved it. Yeah, it was one of my, uh, it was probably my favorite job. Uh, Garen, yeah, that was good. Um, I have one complaint, though, you know. You could have picked any broad on the sideline and you went after Susie there. Well. The famous I... clip. I mean, she's not a looker, Joe. I got I to gotta be <laughs> the one to tell you. You could have any broad in America and you picked her. I'm well, sure she's a, a fine lady and she does a good job on the sidelines, but. I mean, come on, Joe. You let us down. Well, I have apologized, <laughs> but not because uh, of what you say about her. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. So. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Each his own. Hey, did you wake up the next morning and just go, thank God it wasn't Pam Oliver? <laughs> <laughs> no, but when I did the next morning, I felt like a real dog, you know, whenever I figured out what had transferred. Oh, no one it saw it, bad, Joe. Dude. Don't worry about it. Was it harmless? No, it didn't make for yeah, barely anyone. Yeah, barely anyone saw it. it done, you know, it was done, and then it was uh, time to change your pace, man. It I'm, happened. I'm sure the joking continues to this day among your circle of friends, though. <laughs> You guys are bad. <laughs> you know something, Joe? I have to. Uh, I, I have to uh, confront you on this. Uh, uh, you made a year of my life miserable when I was in elementary school uh, because of that goddamn fur coat. <laughs> my, my mother, who of course was in love with Joe Namath, uh, saw you in the fur coat. Now, when you're Broadway Joe Namath and you're uh, you know winning Super Bowls and you're out there uh, in the fur coat. Uh, it's cool going to Hollywood premieres. Yeah, you're you going to parties. On your arm, arm. You're, you can wear the fur coat. You're making uh, CC and Company. Yeah, you're making uh, movies. Yeah, yeah, you know, you're you're, you're, you're CC Rider. Uh, you're wearing the fur coat. It's cool. My mother went and got a fur coat for me. I don't even know. I think I was in like the third or fourth grade. I got my ass kicked. Uh, because I was wearing a fur coat like a girl. Well, it might have been that ribbon in your hair, too. <laughs> you know? Actually, she was such a Joe Namath fan, she sent me in stockings also. <laughs> hey, did you, honestly, did you wear Brute? Of course I did. I did that even in college. That's why it was so much fun to go to work with them initially. And, yeah. Uh, the folks that were owners of uh, Fabergé were just a terrific group, so I had fun, yeah. Muhammad uh, Ali wore brute too, you know, and so did. Uh, it was uh, something we enjoyed doing, uh, and it was a great company to work with. No high karate back then. <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, Joe, you bring up Muhammad Ali. Were you ever starstruck? Because I mean, everyone. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Who who were you uh, starstruck by? Bob Hope, uh, Gregory Peck, Frank Sinatra. Uh, ah, hacks. Yeah, yeah. No, no, <laughs> All the know. biggies. Uh, they, they turned out being guys, you know, that uh, I had admired their work over the years. But, uh, yeah, for the most part, they were those kind of guys. And, uh, you know, when you meet some folks that have accomplished uh, some things, whether it's political uh, or in the arts, uh, it, it's always fun. Starstruck, man, I never met Roberto Clemente, but I was starstruck with him uh, since I was a little kid. You know, I was a big baseball fan and all. Oh, that's right. You're from the Pittsburgh area. Yes, yes, just outside of Pittsburgh. But uh, I never forget uh, when I first met uh, Gregory Peck, you know, he had that really deep voice. And they introduced me to him. I said, how do you do, Mr. Peck? And he says, just call me Greg, Joe. <laughs> I said, yes, sir, Mr. Peck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I couldn't get myself to call him Greg. Hey, was there, was there anybody in the NFL that you were scared of? I mean, look, you got hit a lot. Was there anybody that you just wanted nothing to do with hitting you? Yeah, a whole bunch of them, man. <laughs> you know, they were sick, a lot of those guys. Uh, what was tough is like before a game, you know, you're standing beside them for the introductions. And I'll never forget one time standing beside this defensive end. He was sweating. His eyes were red. He's about six foot eight, and I just said to myself, "What am I doing here?" <laughs> I really, I mean, uh, yeah, there was some folks out there, and there are today. You know, that's their job, man. They've got a lot of enthusiasm, and it's to knock other people down. You know, to 
You know, it was fun to watch, though, back then, uh, where the quarterback would scramble and run with the ball like that instead of just sliding down or, or, or heading for the, uh, the heading for the sideline yeah. or something like that. I mean, obviously, it took its toll on your body. Well, even today, you know, what the NFL has done, and it's not just for quarterbacks. They've altered the rules to prevent uh, some injuries, uh, hopefully so, for the to the head and to the knees and all, and, and rules that have helped the offensive linemen, defensive players uh, help prevent some injuries. The quarterback's uh, a bit of a stretch. I've seen some of the calls recently, and, uh, you know, if you're a defensive player, you can't believe that you get a penalty for that, mm. but... If they didn't enforce those penalties, uh, then the teams would lose their best players. The fans wouldn't get the quality of the game. You know, you get two or three quarterbacks <laughs> knocked out, though. Man, it's a hard position, and you're just going to have the quality of the game go downhill. So I think it also helps maintain uh, a good play. Hey, Joe, who's the best quarterback in the league right now? Well, you know, I'd have to go with Tom Brady for past performances. If we had to go in the one game right now, I'd take Tom Brady. Uh, certainly, but in my opinion, I've not seen anyone like Peyton Manning. Uh, he, he's a one of a kind. He really is How about amazing. The most Manning, overrated I think, player. You think, the what? Over, you think there's an overrated player in the game? Eli Manning. Uh, I don't know about <laughs> overrated players, but I also look at some young players, and what I've been impressed with at this point is the quarterback at Tennessee. Uh, there was a lot of questions about Evans, and, and the more I watch him, the more I'm saying, yeah, they're right about this guy. They're right about this guy. Uh, we forget that the guy's just a rookie, but and, and he won't be running around downfield a whole lot either. But uh, Tennessee's uh, coming on, and uh, I'm very impressed with him as a young quarterback. Right on. And who wins the Super Bowl this year, Joe? That's the old question that none of us ever know till we get there, it <laughs> seems, uh, because of Lady Luck. Look what happened to McNabb the other day. He gets uh, knocked out, and the Eagles aren't going to measure up now. Nope. You know, they might have had a chance to make the playoffs, but they're not going to measure up now. If uh, Lady Luck were to pull the same cruel act on a few of the other players, uh, not just quarterbacks, but if you lose uh, a Manning, uh, if you lose Brady, you know, look what Denver's doing. I'm a little surprised. Mm -hmm. Going to Cutler. You know, uh, they're starting a rookie quarterback now, and they're still really in the hunt. So that that's going to be interesting. Hey, in 99, you were ranked 96 on the uh, list of 100 greatest football players. Who was 95th? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> they, they listed you. Um, there was, apparently, we have it in our bio here. The Sporting News had a list of 100 greatest football players, and I was wondering uh, who was right ahead of you, because if it annoyed you or not. But I'll tell you, there's probably got to be a whole lot of them ahead of old Joe. You guys got to remember something, man. I knew that I wasn't uh, up to speed when I was coming in. And there have been guys that have played uh, many years, uh, like myself, but have been able to perform more consistently over the years. Yeah, so, you had personality, hey, Joe. Anytime, when I hear what Paul Bear Bryan has to say, or Vince Lombardi, or Wee Bubank, uh when those uh, pro coaches and your peers have some things to say about you, that's what I listen to. So uh, I'm just uh, glad that uh, things worked out and we won the championship. Well, Great. The, the book is called Namath. Um Really looks good, man. A lot of great photos, a whole history of uh, of your career. And uh, is it on sale now? Yes. Yeah. Less reading, more photos. Always good. Yes. Yeah, Joe knows yeah. that. Lots Terrific and lots photos. of photos. So Very cool talking to you, Joe. Hey, thank you, Opie, Anthony. You guys take care of yourselves. And little Jimmy Norton, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, Jimmy. You speak up. Uh, I've been talking, but it was, it, we're all just three chiming in. Yeah. Okay. All well, right. Thank anyway, you, Joe. Take thanks care, Joe. Thanks for having me on. All right. It's all right. Joe Namath, everyone. That is uh, goes. very cool. Joe Willie Namath. Yep. Uh, you guys are bad. Bad. Someone's saying he sounded like the Grease Man. <laughs> what are doodle there? <laughs> yeah, that same uh, delivery. Uh, yeah. Oh, wasn't he in Playgirl, too? What spread did he do? Did he do a spread for a magazine like that? I was going to ask him, but I didn't want to say a queer if I was wrong. Wow. Right. <laughs> yeah, you, you would have anyway. <laughs> wrong, right? <laughs> Just that you know that. What he did? Did he do a spread in one of them? I don't know. Fan? You're not going to get a, an answer from I any of know. us. I don't know. Why? Well, we, it's okay to know that. No, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that Burt Reynolds? Oh, Burt was in. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm, I'm mixing up my dreamy yeah. people. You know, you know that? Uh, of you course he knows it. And you even know that. Stop. What? That Burt Reynolds was in Playgirl? You know that. I don't think Burt Reynolds was in uh, Playgirl. I think it was uh, Cosmo. Cosmo Kramer? But you knew he did a, a nude spread. <laughs> it certainly wasn't in Jet. <laughs> <laughs> you knew he did a nude spread is what I'm saying. Though. Yeah. Maybe it was Cosmo. He, he uh, yeah. 
He looked like a bearskin rug. <laughs> With the leg propped up. I don't know. I saw this very famous I don't remember photo. the pose. No, no, it's Bert laying on his side. Oh. And his <laughs> leg is propped up. And he has a towel covering what a lot of us call best parts. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> hey, this is Mark Marin. You're listening to the worst of Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony.